Hello everybody, <laughs> my name is Moni Plier and welcome back to 5 nights at trying to uh, get my friends to understand how Neo Cities works. Um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and explain how to make your own Neo Cities for people who have like probably never coded anything ever in their lives. So I'm just going to start from the top, then I will run through a, um, a little site that I made. Um, just for this uh, video and let's hope it goes well so first off obviously we have to make a new cities I don't feel like logging in and then logging I'm mean, sorry logging out then logging back in but basically all you need to do to make a new cities is have a username an email and a password that's all the only thing that I have to say warning is that make sure that the username you pick you actually like for whatever reason it breaks Neo City's um, search engine and things like that. If you were to, let's say, uh, you changed your username and then I changed my homepage, it would just not uh, refresh or update here ever again, this picture right here. So no matter what you did, it would just be that same old homepage. I'm not sure why it does that, but that's just the thing. It tells you that when you try and change your username right here see it is not advised to change your username so just make sure that you like the username you're going to choose if you need to change your username for whatever reason most people honestly just make an entire new neo cities account and then um link or uh redirect the old one to the new one so with that out the way if you've made your neo cities now you need something to actually code. So either have a laptop or some sort of tablet, something that you can type on, click things. Um, you will also need a code editor. NeoCities comes with a code editor. I do not use it. It's, I mean, it's not the worst thing if you can't for some reason get something else, but it's like you will have to type here not know what it looks like, press save, and then press view every single time you make any sort of small update to figure out what's there and what's not. I personally use brackets. It's right here. Is it brackets or bracket? Actually, brackets. So that's correct. Yeah, I use brackets. And I really enjoy it because one, it comes with live preview. So whatever I do here, over here in brackets, also shows up here in real time. Um, and also it comes with, um, a lot of suggestions. So let's say I type in R, then it gives me all of these things that I could try out that I wouldn't have known off the top of my head. So I personally like brackets for that reason. And if you do use brackets also, like I am, you will need Google Chrome only for the live preview. For whatever reason, it won't work with Opera, but it does work with, um, Google Chrome. So... <sighs> That's all. So basically, as I said, you need Neo Cities account, you need brackets or some sort of code editor, you need Google Chrome if you're using brackets, and then also you need a folder for all of your things. So I have one that is called my website. It has all my billions and zillions of HTML files. I have one folder inside of it for images, and I have subfolders inside of it for different images for different things. Um. And yeah, that's really all. So when you start with brackets, let's say you're opening up for the first time, what you want to do is open file and then press open folder. So this is, it's already in the folder that I need, my website, so that I can get to all the other folders that are in there whenever I need them. So once you've downloaded everything, opened up brackets, opened up the folder, then we can start. So, so, um, if you are making a home page, the home page will be called index.html. See how on NeoCities you cannot delete it, you cannot move it anywhere, because that is what the home page for any um, Neo Cities is. So like when you go on money.neocities.org, it doesn't say slash dot index, but if you do put it in there, it's the same thing. 
it's it's the home page so if you are making a home page right now you will have to call it index.html but if it's anything else then it can be about.html as long as it, it, it ends with .html you will be fine now ignoring that now to start with the actual um file itself um well we'll have to start with the html tag html is pretty much made up of tags um the first tag you will need to have in there is as i said the html tag and a really good thing about um brackets specifically is that if you do a tag like this it automatically closes your tags for you so you don't have to remember the ending tag and ending tags have little slash and the same name but again brackets does it for you so you don't have to really think about it and after that after the html tag the biggest tag there is then we go to the style tag style is for your css which is your cascading style sheets the basis of any website is HTML and CSS and sometimes JavaScript. I am not going to teach JavaScript in this one because again, it's very, very beginner, very basic. You don't need JavaScript. You could have an entire big page with no JavaScript at all if you really wanted to. So it's not needed for anything. But if you would like to make your page pretty, you will have to use CSS. So. The difference between HTML and CSS is like HTML is the skeleton, the bones of everything, but it's like a pile of bones that you don't know where they particularly go. And then when you have CSS, CSS is kind of like the instructions of how to put the bones and the flesh on top. So for example, if I just deleted the entire style sheet right here, it would just be nothing there's literally nothing there it's no longer in the middle there's no longer any color i mean the image is still there at least but it's pretty much gone so css is very important there's two ways you can do css you can either do it through the style tag like i'm doing or you can link an external style file and so let's say you would be like okay home.css it's I find that just doing it between the style tags that I have here is just a lot easier for me because I hated switching like back and forth between the style and the um, the HTML file. It's just so much easier for me if it's all just in one. So, okay. Now that we've gone through the style tag, we'll come back to it. But after the style tag, which is, it's a metadata tag. It's, it's information. I have another metadata tag, which is the head tag. This tag and what is inside it will basically just tell people what the page is about. There's no, you don't style these. So for example, in the title, I have Neo Tutorial Home. That's what will be on the tab when people click the page. You could change it to anything, Neo Tutorial, that's just it. Then it's just Neo Tutorial. Go back, put Neo Tutorial Home. It, what is that? There we go. It's back to the tutorial home. Um, and that's the easy part. So again, metadata, you don't style these. You, there's nothing to do with them. They're just data. Now, when we get to the body tag, this is where everything really happens. This is where the skeleton of things happen. I'll try my best to, um, show how it works hold on for a minute Big tag. one two close that three okay so the body tag is obviously where where the body is that's where the bulk of everything is going to be on your page then i made a div tag called container this is where, you, first off, a div tag, it means divider. It's like a section of your thing. It can be styled, which I did, but you can also give it an attribute called ID. An ID is, well, ID, it's, it has how you identify the div. 
So you're like, okay, I like this div. I'm just gonna call container so I can figure out which one it is. It contains these things. I found another div um, block. It's called one. I named it one because it is the first div that is inside container. And then two because it's the second div that's inside the container. Um, then we have a P tag right here. P is for paragraph. So this is this, this P tag is this right here, the paragraph. So I have, hey, I'm Neo Tutorials. B is for bold, as it says right here. So this is in bold. So this is in bold. Tags go around, they wrap around whatever you would like them to embolden. So for I, that's italics. Italics here. Strike through. Strike through used to be called something else, but they changed the tag to DEL, like delete. So this is strike through. DEL. Okay. So that's the P tag. That these are all tags that are inside the paragraph. Two bolds, an italics, and a delete are all in the P tag. Now that we're here, we're moving to the first div, the first divider, the first section that is inside of the container right here. I've named it one so I could easily style it that way and I it, it's like a comment. Oh, I forgot to say that comments, if you can see them, are right here. They do not show up on the page itself. Comments are for you so you can figure out, you know, you can basically just leave a comment for yourself to remind you what's what. So I said, okay, this head is metadata. Okay, I said the body is elements. I said the style tag is a CSS. Just little comments for me to understand and remember where things are. Now back to it. You've passed the P tag, you've passed this paragraph. We're onto the first div, we're onto the first divider. So for the first uh, thing, I said let's make a link. So I coupled it with a P tag. It's a paragraph, this whole thing's a paragraph. And how you do a tag is A href equals your link so this right here href whatever you can link it to somewhere far away like as i had which was money.neocities.org or you could link something closer so you could just look through let's say there we go link it to anime so now when I click it, oh, forgot. Don't put the um the slash here. Anyway, when you click it, it goes to a page that I've already done. So that's what a link is like. A drop link. Now, if you want to try to put an image, the tag for that is um, less than image src, which stands for source. Again, just like links, it can be something that is local as in this is on my computer or I can have something that is from Tumblr or wherever you found a link it's really huge but look it's linked I'll go back to my local file though local file meaning on my computer now we can close this first div because we're done looking at it now we can look at the second div. Um, so it's just another um, paragraph tag. But I wanted to show the span tag in between because it's, it's almost like a highlighter. The span tag is almost like a highlighter. I can change it and move it to where it's only on this. It only highlights like that. So if you need to highlight some sort of word or words, but only those specifically, not the entire paragraph, you can use the span tag. Now, now that we've gone through them, let me open them back up again. Oh, sorry, let me open them back up again, one and two. And now we can go back up to the style tag. As I said before, without the style, if I delete the style, it's nothing. There, It's no longer in the middle. There's no longer any pictures of any kind. And it just sucks, honestly. So if I undo that, put the style tag back there, 
now you can see there's all there's a there's a picture back there. There's pictures here. There's lots of pictures, lots of colors, lots of different things to do. So let's go into the style tag and look at some of the things that are here. So whenever there is a tag somewhere, you can style it. Whatever tag you have, what the the image tag, the paragraph tag, div especially, any tag that you have that isn't metadata, like you can't style the title. You you can't style the head. It's not that's just information. That's not an element. Any tag that is some sort of element, like body, div, paragraph, um, image, any of those types of tags, element tags, can be styled, and they're styled in the style tag. So let's start from the beginning. In the HTML tag, it encompasses everything. It's the entire, it's the entire file right here between the HTML tags. It's kind of I, playing with HTML is kind of like those matryoshka dolls where like you open one doll and there's another doll inside. HTML is very just containers and containers in it's it's just a, a way to organize. It's very it's very organized. Everything has its parent. Everything is in something else. In this case, everything is in HTML. Everything is in that parent tag. Now, I styled the HTML by typing HTML and giving brackets. So let me try, I'll just type it again so people can see. HTML, brackets, again, it closes it for you. Press enter so it can have some space. But basically in here, you're just trying different attributes. So for the HTML tag, which again, it encompasses the entire the entire page everything that you see from this point corner to this point corner that's the entire HTML tag that we're looking at so you can style you don't have to put you don't have to style the HTML anyway but usually I use it because it's like a what is the default for you so my default font that I really like is MX Gothic so I want 99% of the fonts here to be MS Gothic. So I use the HTML tag because it over encompasses everything. And then I also made the background image something that was local on my computer. I can change it to something else if I want to. Or not PNG, I have no idea what that is. See? Now it's changed. Background image. And then when you're done with an attribute, make sure to close it with the semicolon. So, I don't know, let's see, since HTML encompasses everything, let's see if I wanted to maybe change the color of the text of everything to white. To change text color of anything, it's just color. I don't know why, instead of text dash color, but it's just color. So, make it Alice Blue, which is pretty white. Now, most of the text is white, except for other text that has been styled a different way. So, the default color for text is black, so all I have to do is uh, delete that and it's gone. Okay. So, we've gone to HTML. Body. Body, the way that I've styled it doesn't really matter right now. Um, it's hard to explain, so just ignore body for right now. Now, we go to container. This is how you... Um, this is how you style like man-made elements like there are elements that are there that are on default like html and body those are things that are made but container is from an id i made div id that's an attribute i i, I named it something i named this section of code something and i named it container container is this big blue thing this entire thing so the way you do that is pound and the name of whatever ID you've given it. You can name it anything you want. If I name this um, box, but I don't update it here, then it's not going to know. But if I go here and also change it to box, 
then it's fine. So going through the box, the the this div named box. Um, also, just to go back to IDs, IDs are just as it's called IDs. They're identification. They're ways for you to identify what element is what and which ones you want to style. There's also something called classes. They are very close to IDs, except for IDs are specific. You can only have one thing called box. You wanna name something else box, you gotta call it box two or something else. But with classes, they can go for many different things. So for example, let's say cars. All cars are under the class of car, but there are SUVs, so the ID would be SUV. There are pickup trucks, there are sports cars. They have different IDs, but they're all under the same class of car. I did something similar for this thing, a page I made about my OC stories. They each have their own IDs. This one's Traversion, this one's Neon, this one's Tronics, etc. But they're all under, well, some of them are under the same class of when I put my pointer on it, they hover. So this is the ID of Traversion, but the class of Bounce, I believe I called it. ID of Neon, but the class of Bounce. They both do the same thing, but they are different IDs. So they could be styled with different pictures. Okay. Um, now back to container, oh sorry, I've renamed it box. Back to box, um, so there's a bunch of attributes you can do. As I said before with brackets, it's a lot easier to style things because they give you suggestions on what you can do. For example, border. I put aqua, which is the color of the border, 7 pixels, which is the thickness of it, and groove, which is the style of the border. There's so many ways to do the same exact thing. Border is straight, uh, sorry, shorthand, but you can just go border width 7 px Border style groove. Border color aqua. And it would be the same as me just going border aqua 7px groove. Border is the shorthand, where you can do all three in one. But if I were to do the three, same exact thing, doesn't change. So I'm just going to use the shorthand because who doesn't love uh, things that are short? <laughs> but now that I've, I've given it the dimensions of 500 pixels um, tall, 500 pixels um, wide, you can change this to whatever you like. 600 make it a rectangle now it's uh, wider if you do not give something a height and a width or either one of these if you only give a height or you only give a width it's going to take the width or the height of the parent so example if i just said oh well i don't really care about what the width is the html that it's in because the box is a child to the html the HTML is what holds the box. So if I were to take away the width, then it's just going to take on the width of the the screen, the HTML. So it's as big as the screen. And again, if you did the same with height, if you took the height away, then it's just going to take the height of the parent it's in. In this case, it is the child of HTML. HTML is its parent. HTML also doesn't have a width or a height. It's just the entire screen. So, oh, it doesn't do that with height. That's interesting. I think because with the height, it just takes the um, the height of the children that it's in. But if I did want to make it the entire screen, I could do height 100%. And it would be the entire screen. So make sure to put height and list with things that you want to be a specific um, size. Now, with margin auto. 
margin is about what is outside of the box think of the margin of a paper the outside of the margin padding is about what is inside of the box like what you do when you pad something so it doesn't touch the edges like when you uh i don't know ship off a package you have to put padding inside if it's very fragile so for right now we have the margin auto so that means that it will it's just going to be in the center of the page no matter what if someone's uh, screen is wide it's going to be in the middle if someone's screen is small it's going to be in the middle if i just said margin zero it would just change back to its normal form which is to the left things are everything almost everything default is to the left Oops, sorry there we go so margin auto if you want it in the middle margin nothing margin zero if you just want it to the left so i'm putting it back in the middle um then again padding as i said that is for inside the box so whatever whatever children is inside the box is not going to touch the edge you are welcome to do as little or as much padding as you want if I took away, maybe if I add a little bit more padding, it's farther away. See? Farther away from the top, left, right, middle, all that stuff. It's it's starkly in the middle. Um, and then the background image. First off, I would just like to say there is no order to the attributes. Just change the attributes when you feel like it. The only time ma order matters is if you somehow put border aqua. And then you said border dash color and you said red which would be confusing then it's going to take red instead because of the order it's in but besides that nothing matters you can put the height before the width width before the height there's no nothing there's no need to care about it like that but anyway back to the background image is that well it's a background image it's an image that i have locally it's on my computer so there goes the box. That is our container that keeps all the little things in here. Okay, now we're on to one. One is the first div that I have in here. As I said before, if you do not give it a height or a width, it will take the width of whatever it's in. Its parent is, say with me class, is the box um, div. So our box is 600 um, pixels wide so our div our div called one is 600 pixels wide as well except for the um the padding that is in the box it's not touching the edges um i gave it just a very plain border so i could see them better um the background image again local you can make your background images images from somewhere else as i said before if you want to do that do that if you want this instead i can't remember if it's working on it yep look background image is that it does not have to be on your computer though i will say specifically for neo cities do not hot link hot link means that you are taking the bandwidth from their site do it if you want a picture on your own um on your own site please download it and put it on your computer but tumblr or something if if it's hosted on tumblr who cares tumblr is a billion dollar company they'll be fine mm -hmm. and then going back to two which is our second div right here um to talk about margin and padding again as i've said before margin is outside of the box padding is inside so if this had no margin they would be touching like this so if you would like two divs and you would like some space between them do a margin you can do margin top 10px for two for so the second div it has the margin up here or you can go to one and put the margin at the bottom and it would be the same there's no difference 
again, there's very many ways to do the same exact thing. So if you want to put a margin top for the second div, or if you want to put margin bottom for the first div, whatever floats your boat. That's all. Now, A, which you might not know, is a link. We are styling the link. As I said before, text color is, um, you just put color, colon, red, semicolon, and you can color it any way you like. Now it's blue. Or there's lots of colors that are, um, built in. You can also do hex colors. I just don't feel like remembering any of them, but there's lots of ones that are built in that will work. So, oh, there we go. Deep pink. If you want a pink link. And span. Styling span is the background color is aquamarine, as you can see with this right here. Um, I believe that is it. I think I've explained everything. I hope that it was it made sense. Um genuinely. Oh, and since we're talking about things being in the center with margin, I could just make the text align center so that means everything that is in html which is everything will be centered and look nice and in the center so i hope i really do hope this made sense um i tried to explain it as best as i could with everything um again divs are dividers they're sections you don't have to style them they could just be sectioned out for no reason but that's the the most common use of a div is to section things out in a box form some sort of form um again i tried to make this extremely easy for beginners um oh maybe i should talk about how to maybe upload it I, there's nothing really to it this is the main um the main folder for everything so I usually keep my HTMLs here, like my HTML files here. So let me upload, let me upload the one that I just did. What is this called? Basic. I'll delete it later. But since all of my images that I used here are also already uploaded for other pages, I don't have to upload my images, but you will have to. Whatever you use in here, whatever you link to in here, needs to be uploaded here. So, now I can look at the thing. Basic.html Oh, something's missing. Don't know what though. But anyways... Man, what is missing? I have all those Egyptian uh, stuff. But whatever. I'm trying to figure out what am I missing. weird i guess i do have to upload some stuff hold on y'all images images i thought i was stock movie but apparently not let me see what i'm missing brick for y'all um Google user. Excuse me. This? I thought it was already uploaded then. There we go. Now it's perfect. So, that's what it looks like. You will have to upload the images where they're supposed to be. Because if I uploaded them out of order somewhere else, like in some other folder that wasn't named the same, it's not gonna work. So. Make sure to keep your folders um, as organized as you can. There we go. And I'm going to delete it because I don't really need it anywhere. Um, but that's all. Um, again, I hope it was helpful. If you have any sort of uh, questions, just let me know. I don't feel like recording anything else with video, so you would just have to listen to my voice. But, um... I couldn't edit this like I usually do. I couldn't figure out how to do like um, recording myself doing things in real time and then talking. So I couldn't edit it as well as I usually do. 
um but again if you have any questions put them down below i had recorded like this twice basically i had one that was like 35 minutes long and i was actually doing it in real time like typing up all this stuff in real time and then when i was finished with the side i was like what if i just go back and talk on it like i still went through everything and explained it but i was like literally figuring out what to type as i did last time so i thought it was just like a lot more messy that way so i i redid it i redid it with the page already done and me just going back and talking about it but i guess if you guys would like to see another video let me know if you guys want me to do it in like a spur of the moment literally code along with me thing because that is way harder for me to edit or if you like this where I've, i have a page already done and i just explain how i did it because i would if you guys would want another one like this if you guys would want me to do like another page when i'm actually doing my pages for my website if you guys would like me to you know show you guys more advanced techniques but this was literally just for people who have never coded a darn thing i wanted to explain it as much as i could i hope i helped and if i did not you can go to w3 schools they um they're very good at teaching what tags do and different things and when you're actually coding your site you can also go to um stack overflow it's like it's more like a troubleshooting place more than a teaching you whatever site so if you have a specific problem that you're running into and you need to troubleshoot something uh stack overflow is your place but if you're literally just starting out coding anything and you want to learn more actual knowledge and syntax and all that stuff then w3 school is also your place everything will be linked down below that you need and if you guys even wanted the little file that i have like the the page that i made to download you can guys can have that too just let me know what you guys want and that is all bye